Seven, oops, seven o'clock, I'll call the meeting. The order has the meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Moving on to recognitions. Anybody from the board have anything? Actually, I just wanted to say it was exciting to see five of our students at Skills USA for the first time. Um, it's an organization that basically looks at technical skill attainment and leadership skills. And um, it was it was really neat. I got to, um, because of my position at the technical college system, I got to open the event with some words. And then I was sitting right next to pretty much our team because they were uh, had VIP seating because it was their first time in attendance. So it was exciting. Mr. Tabor has done a great job. And the results aren't in yet as far as what the competitors is just the award ceremony just started actually you gonna get live updates or i'm hoping i, I <laughs> actually told him to buzz me we had some people going to georgia break the news that's national so we can break it here <laughs> anybody else from the board have anything uh the middle school had some plays this last week and um i got to watch the sixth grade play and that was excellent all those kids did a wonderful job the school did a wonderful job playing that together it was really fun to see the growth from last year so that was amazing Anybody else on the board? Administrators. Hello. First, I want to um, congratulate Mrs. Deuce. Last week, we had our last two music program pro programs with third and first grade. And first grade is one of our largest class with 133 kids. And they all got on the stage, and they were awesome, as usual. And then we are bringing back our day of play this Friday. We haven't done it in a long time for many reasons. And so hopefully it will be a good day where the kids know technology um, and where you've got it set up where they pretty much, they play all day. There's no academic structure technically, but there's social skills being learned during that time. So thank you. Thanks. I'd like to echo Ben's shout out to our plays, uh, Katrina Haas Settler, uh, spearheaded the fifth grade play. That was Thursday night, the 33 Piggies. Uh, and then Friday, Marcy Russell did a great job with the sixth grade play in The Reluctant Dragon. Uh, and it is fun to see the, um, the growth uh, in, the, in the performances. Um, we also had it set up, if you were there, we used kind of our black risers uh, that fold in and make a stage. And we did the shells and, and brought everything closer to the, the bleacher area. Uh, it just reinforced that we don't need that stage. So I'm glad that it was part of our referendum. We're going to change that into usable space. The last shout out actually is a kind of a weird one, is our Seals on Wheels program. Um, two years ago, we did a, we get back to Seals on Wheels and the, the hygienists that were uh, going through said, we have, we have an issue. Um, I don't know if it was kids wearing masks or whatever else, but the teeth uh, were not in a very good state um, to the point where they, have, they equated some of our um, students having, um, we're going to need false teeth before they were in their 20s. And so we did some education, had them put on a couple things. Uh, last year was better. This year they said, gave me the thumbs up saying, Efforts are paying off, so hopefully we have some healthy teeth. But I think that just strengthened the partnership that we have with the community uh, as we try to support our kids. So, I've got a lot of them today, but we've got a lot going on at the high school, so I wanted to, to give some, some congratulations to uh, I'll start with the 199 PHS students that achieved high honors or honors for third quarter. Uh, well done to them. And then we've had a number of students uh, recently participating in different activities, qualify for state competitions. Uh, the PHS Civics game team is going to be competing in state on May 12th. Good luck and congratulations to them and their advisor, Garrett Jones. The Platteville FFA food science team actually won a state championship and qualified uh, to compete at the National FFA Convention, so congratulations to them. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have FFA CDE teams competing in poultry, agronomy, livestock, and meat science. Uh, we did a little send-off this morning. It was great to see them excited to compete tomorrow and represent Platteville High School. And then, as was mentioned today uh, and yesterday, uh, the Skills USA team competed for the first time at the state level, and it was really neat. Uh, they they received their their official charter, 
So I'd, I'd like to say a special thank you to Josh Tabor, the advisor of the group, and all the students that, that work so hard to make the first year of Skills USA such a success. Another group of students uh, recently competed at State FBLA last week. They did a great job representing Platteville High School there. And one more group that competed recently and are continuing to compete, uh, our speech team competed at the state level. We had eight gold medals, uh, seven silver, five bronze, and five more events that are participating virtually. Uh, special thank you to Cheryl Schober, the advisor, and many of the additional coaches who support the speech team. And last, but certainly not least, uh, today we celebrated the amazing administrative assistants that work at Platteville High School and throughout the district. And I, I wanted to publicly thank uh, and recognize Molly Nodoff and Laura Stoney for everything that they do, supporting the staff and students at Platteville High School. Jim. I'd like to follow up two of, of Jacob's items, and that is Administrative Assistant Day. Anybody who spent a couple of minutes or more in a school system really know the value of our admin assistants. So hopefully this day helps them feel recognized. And secondly, I was uh, able to go up to the speech team contest, and that's used to be called forensics, but it's such a variety, they, they changed the name to speech team. And it was interesting, we, we were in a room, and there were four separate teams competing, and the back of the room was all lined up with Platteville parents and I didn't see any other parents in the room besides us. Uh, proud of our parents, but also I, I gotta, gotta believe that spurred that group to get a good score, because we were there for them. Same thing in our room. Now there was one other family from, I don't know where, but there was mainly the five Platteville families. Mm -hmm. Good support. Very good. All right, we'll move on to opportunity for public input. I see we have five people signed up. Just a reminder, we allocate 15 minutes total for individual comments, and if you could limit your comments to three minutes each, please. First one that I have signed up is, sorry, I don't bring my glasses. Jill Wiederholt? I don't have glasses. Okay. I just thought it was a sign-in sheet, too. And you are? Serena. Okay. I'm right under Disney. Sounds good. Mark Ludlam? Good evening, everyone. Um, at the current Platteville High School, there is a broadcast booth in the name of Jack O'Neill for a longtime broadcaster that's been named on his behalf, sitting at the Platteville High School, been there for a long time. I'm curious, or asking a question moving forward, with our new track complex, do we have any thoughts on naming it on behalf of any individual, perhaps a coach that's been coaching for 40 years, any thoughts on naming rights, or is there anything that has to be done uh, as far as moving forward with something like that. I just know what's been done in the basketball arena and with a new track complex, football complex, there's lots of places, lots of avenues to perhaps name something. I don't know if that's possible, reasonable, manageable. I do not know all those questions. I'm just here asking a curiosity question to move forward. So appreciate the thoughts on that and uh, that's all I need for this evening. Thank you much for your time, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Ludlam. Sue Ryder. Oh, just signing sheet. Same thing, Josh? Okay. That's who I have for opportunity for public input. We will move on then to information and discussion items. First one up is facilities improvement update. We have the April update that, that we've shared out. Uh, we also have uh, it's dry enough that they're starting to move the dirt again. And we had an encouraging meeting today. If the weather cooperates for another three or four days, we should be in a really good position if we get more rain. And if you remember when we first started this, one of the, one of the things to watch was once you get started, if you can get those first 60 days in, everything else should go according and be on schedule. So if we can get these next four or five days in, the way that they have managed the site, even if we do get a significant rain, it'll be able to manage that water and, and sheet it off is the term that the professionals are using. So that's a little bit of that update. But what I would also like to do is give an example of point of beginning each week, starting two weeks ago, 
they meet with myself, business manager, director of building and grounds, and they take us through a weekly financial update. And I certainly am not an expert in interpreting how these, these work, but I can give you kind of what we're looking for as we share this out. Uh, in the left-hand column, these were, those are the contractors that we approved a couple of board meetings ago. And if you recall, we approved each contractor individually. That will come into play later when we talk about uh, the referendum spending as an action item. The contracts, that's what we approved in, in this column. The approved change orders, when you start a large project, anything that you do that wasn't agreed upon in that contract is a change order. Sometimes those change orders are in our favor. For example, uh, let's go down here to the Midwest Sports Turf and Systems. Our original contract stated that we wanted our school red. And that's what they bid us at. They also were kind enough to say, here's our standard red. And when we had their standard red, it was really close to our red. Hey, $9,000, because we didn't have to pay for that special red. So that's, it can go in our favor. Uh, other items, for example, uh, this top one, the staging area, that is to the east side behind our existing shed, and that's where you'll see a lot of the job site trailers. And when that's done, project's done, that's well-groomed, it'll remain, and, and the school can st still get function out of that. So that's what the change order aisle is. Uh, the current contract amount, that's if it's an approved change order. Uh, these change orders, some are fluid, some are waiting for costs. This final column is, we've actually paid this bill. <coughs> so, for example, here we have Owens excavating and trenching. They requested that we pay that amount. That amount has been paid, it's been recorded. So it's a good way to keep track as we go along. All told, what the number that I start with when I look at this is to come down to the bottom and I look at the estimate that we first had, the activities complex plus the parking lot, that was a total of 12 million. And with everything that we have spent and were scheduled to spend, so those approved change orders, we still have 1.18 million. Uh, that's a good position to be. That by no means guarantees that at the end of the day, at the end of the project, we're gonna have 1.18 million. There are going to be unknown circumstances. As much planning as we have, we're still undergoing a significant project. <clears throat> This is good to have this much of a cushion. Uh, we'll see as we go along. So that's this tool that we can use as a board. Any questions about the what functions? Nope. Okay. 4B, we have the Diverse Student Alliance. I am going to shrink the screen so we get the Pictures there. <laughs> um, Zachary, yeah. when you're ready, please take the lead. Thank you. Man, it's an expensive building. You guys don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys, yeah. Hi, I'm Emily Zachary. I am an English teacher at the high school, but I also am one of the district's inclusion advocates, and I also get to be um, one of the, or the um, teacher leader of the Diverse Student Alliance, which is an amazing student group. And they are here to talk a little bit about what the group is, but then also to um, talk about a really incredible opportunity that the group has to join a really amazing nonpartisan group that Wisconsin has just started um, through the organization of Dr. Jeff Jacobson um, and a couple of other people. So I'm gonna let them take it away. And they're very excited and not nervous at all. <laughs> Here we go. This is, sorry, I was going to introduce him too. This is Sophie Stone. She is our president. You're into it? Is that okay? And then oh, oh yeah, okay. There you go. Right. Hello, everyone. I'm <laughs> Sophia Stone, and I am the president of DSA. Um, what is DSA? We are a high school student led organization. We formed about three years ago during my sophomore year of high school, and have grown in size immensely each year. We started off with around five founding members. 
and we're now up to about 85 members. We exist to advocate, educate, mentor, and support through a variety of activities that we'll now discuss. Um, we do mentorship, and we also go do activities outside of school, like field trips and stuff like this. Hi, I'm Melissa Blevins, and I'm just a member of DSA. So we started member mentorship program this year, and we do it with both Westview and middle school. Um, the teachers and guidance counselors help us pair the students um, based on academics, extracurricular activities, and other outside support. Um, high school DSA students go to the schools to support the kids and just get that one-on-one -on -one connection and long-lasting relationships with others. Hi, I'm Amelia Thelman. I'm the junior class representative, and I'm going to talk a little bit about monthly meetups. So this is something we do every month, um, well, we try to at least, and we have been doing this for the past three years, so it's kind of becoming like a tradition for DSA, and these meetups consist of going to Neil Wilkins and Westview every other month to educate, advocate, um, and advocate different cultural celebrations, which is really cool for both us and the students. Um, the majority of the DSA students are able to attend and spend about 30 minutes in different grades and classrooms each month. And usually we try to take at least like one bus, so a lot of our students go to these meetups. And at these meetups we just read books, we created crafts, we have danced, we've played, we've done a number of other activities and projects throughout our meetups. And I think there's just a really great opportunity for not only us students, but also for the younger students, so they can have like role models to look up to, and it's just overall great. Hello, my name is Gabby Cadro, and I am the Vice President. I will be talking <laughs> not mentorship, but education. So we really value educating ourselves and the members in our club. We believe through education, we're able to learn about language, culture, um, traditions, and it just breaks barriers that we didn't know was there before. So our ways to educate ourselves and our members was our partnership with the UWP student organization. We had a student panel with the BSU, which is the Black Student Union. This included um, discussions about the multiple multicultural clubs that they have at UW Platteville. And they also discussed the college life as um, a student of color and the opportunities they have there and resources at UW Platteville. And another thing that we did was we went to Milwaukee back in November. We had a multicultural museum, which we took about 40 students, I believe. So it was pretty inclusive. And there we we're able to look at the different cultures and exhibits they had. So it was really cool to see. And next year, we're planning on going to the Cedar Rapids Museum, where we'll be looking at the African American Museum of Iowa and the Black Holocaust. Next up, to educate ourselves, we have the partnership with the Public Museum. And this will partake later on in the year. So the Public Museum currently has students going to them every Wednesday, elementary school students. And they're just very swarmed and busy. So we're going to have our mentorships um, there to help like play games with the student, help with homework, and just any other extracurriculars. And this year, our partnership with the Public Museum, we had an exam cram during finals. We were able to decorate cookies, we had pizza, and it was just a place for people to study during finals hours, yeah. All right, so next up, kind of the reason we're here, um, we would really like to join the nonpartisan group, We Are Many United Against Hate, to meet and network with other high school students around the state that are already part of the group. So we will not be the first ones. Um, there are over 10 schools already part of the program. So we are super excited to get new ideas and find more resources and gain new perspectives. Um, and we actually had a speaker come to our school, Dr. Jeff Jacobson, and he spoke about joining the group and it sounded like a wonderful opportunity, not only for like us students, but also for the school overall. 
So Dr. Jeff Jacobson um, is partnering uh, with Masood Akhtar. He is a um, businessman in Madison who founded this group uh, quite a few years ago. Um, the website is linked uh, here and so you can read more about it. Um, but it is a nonpartisan group um, and basically Dr. Jeff Jacobson is the school liaison. So he's trying to get schools in the state of Wisconsin. There are currently, I think, um, eight guaranteed, 10 that are interested. And so right now it is just a place for like-minded students to share ideas, to um, encourage one another. They have monthly Zoom meetings. Um, and so I think that would be an incredible resource for the students of Platteville. Um, but I think the thing I am most excited about is that the students at Platteville are phenomenal. They are doing incredible things. Um, I think above and beyond what a lot of schools in the state of Wisconsin are doing. That was actually the first comment that Dr. Jacobson made was that he could not believe what we had done in just a short amount of time. And so we really want to like celebrate and showcase that. So the We Are United group has actually gotten to speak um, in Green Bay. They spoke um, at the school board convention, actually the state school board convention. They spoke at the um, principals convention. Uh, they've actually gotten to go to Washington, D.C. Um, to speak and meet President Biden. A group of them got to go and do that. Um, just this past Sunday, actually, one of our um, um, students, Asma, was able to go to the governor's mansion because they were um, having a um, celebration for um, Muslim students and she was personally invited um, by Dr. Jeff Jacobson after hearing about our group um, to go and so that was like the most fun she's ever had, she said. <laughs> um, and so that's pretty incredible that just after meeting um, him once that she was invited to do that, and now she's being interviewed on PBS uh, this coming weekend. <laughs> so things happen pretty quickly. <laughs> um, and so I just think that that's a really amazing testament to how incredible and fast moving this organization is. They are hoping to become, I think, state funded within the year um, through grants. And so they are really powerful, and I think the students at Platteville are really powerful. And so it would be a really cool partnership to showcase what they are doing in this community, but then also show the state what Platteville is doing and what they're doing for Southwest Wisconsin. So we would love to ask to have the board allow us to be part of the group. Um, we wouldn't change DSA at all. We'd keep our name. We wouldn't have to do anything differently. It would basically just give us more resources, but we were very much encouraged by Dr. Jacobson um, to kind of get board approval um, and just to make sure that that is done and so there's um, paperwork and kind of literature that was given out um, and so that's kind of he just said the next step but nothing on our end really changes just more resources and, and information that the students then have at their disposal any questions well, that's all it's going to take is in a, at a future meeting board approval and you guys can be a part of the organization yes okay Thank you. Good job. Good job. <laughs> nice work, ladies. We'll move on to the items on the consent agenda. Inside of our consent agenda, we have the minutes of our previous meeting on April 12, 2023. We have the resignation of a fifth grade teacher. We have the resignation of a first grade teacher. And we have the resignation of a middle school STEM tech ed teacher. So I'll move. Second. Motion by Colleen, or Kurt, second by Colleen, to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. Any questions or comments on any of those? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion and a second for the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Colleen, second by Matt, to approve the items on the agenda as presented. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to action items. Personnel, 23, 24 summer in or first semester intern for Westview. Yeah, this is a long standing practice at Westview in which we have an intern with our Phi Ed department. And through an interview process, the recommendation is Nicholas Richter for that position. So moved. Second. Second. I didn't catch that. Was it Betsy and then Steve? No, it was Betsy and then Ben. Good. Ben. By Betsy, second by Ben to approve the uh, the intern as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
Motion carries. On to biology teacher. Uh, prior to recommending the, the hires in our action agenda, I want to note that our administrative team employs a sound process, one that we successfully use for hiring throughout our schools. Uh, for external hires, this process includes posting the position. We can is a popular spot. We use our local paper. Uh, we started with the rural schools. Uh, there's a, a website to broadcast out for people interested in coming to rural schools. Uh, the process is submitted to the superintendent prior to the interview. A first round interview occurs with administrative staff and teachers. The next step, reference checks. And then a second round interview is with the superintendent and that can also include a building tour and maybe a lesson observation. And finally, offering the position to that selected candidate. Again, this is a process that has allowed us to hire many skilled and talented educators over the years. We are confident that all the candidates presented to the board this evening are the best possible fit for the positions available. High so, school biology teacher. 7B, uh, it's the recommendation to approve Jacob Roberts for the high school biology teacher position. So moved. Second. Motion by Colleen, second by Kurt to approve the hiring of Jacob Roberts as the high school biology teacher. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. High school bi -ed health teacher. Is the recommendation of administration to approve the hiring of Isaiah Altfelish for the high school bi -ed health teacher position? So moved. Okay. Motion by Betsy, second by Ben, to approve the hiring of Isaiah Altflish as the high school phi ed health teacher. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. On to middle school counselor. It is the recommendation to uh, approve the hiring of Kate Lang as the middle school counselor. So moved. Second. Motion by Matt, second by Steve, to approve the hiring of Kate Lang as middle school counselor as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Special ed art teacher. Uh, is the recommendation of administration to approve the hiring of Jenna Ekstrom for the special education art teacher position at Neil Wilkins? So moved. Second. Motion by Betsy, second by Steve, to approve the hiring of Jenna Ekstrom as special ed art teacher as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries, District Student Information Specialist. It is the recommendation to approve the hiring of Laura Stoney as the District Student Information Specialist. This is a little unique, and normally when we have our staff that accept positions within the district, so they're moving a position. For example, if it's a teacher position, we handle those at the administrative level because it's more of a lateral move. I felt that the significance from going the high school as the administrative assistant to our student information system, that specialist of a position, because it's such a drastic move, I felt this would take board approval. So moved. Second. Motion by Colleen, second by Kurt, to approve the hiring of Laura Stoney as the district student information specialist as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Referendum purchasing. Let's, we'll bring this document forward. I had mentioned there's a difference between point of beginning and then Myron. Let's note the activity complex, our partner point of beginnings. They handle it differently. They allowed us to pay our contractors directly. Myron is our general contractor for all of our other projects. This is a bid sheet that explains everything that we'll have to be responsible for with payments. And you can see there are different contractors on the sheet, but what we're approving is just one amount 
because that amount then is paid to Myron, and then they distribute the payments. That, that's a, a subtle difference, but I think worth explaining. Similar to what we looked at with point of beginning with the weekly update, here is the bid sheet for Westview Elementary, and on the left-hand column you can, say, you can see what we had the base bid budget, what we had budgeted. You can then see the base bid total, and we will be accepting all of the lower bids in the base bid total. And our budget going into this, it was $598,236. The bids came back at $595,554. So that's, that's pretty accurate bidding to actually to also have those bids come in. But wait a second. We are adding, we are proposing to add a addendum to this process. And what happened was that the genesis of, of this is we started looking at the new drive, the new drop off, the new pickup lane. We started getting the pictures. And another need just kept bubbling up, a, a real primary need. And if you have experience at Westview, to the north, the water sets. And it gets in those gaga ball pits, and it stays there. It, it just doesn't drain effectively at all. And the water also is coming up after rain, during the winter when it snows, is resting up against the side of our building. So then you start to think through, all right, would it be more economical if while those large machines and those experts are on site, would it be economical to solve that issue at the same time since everything's dug up? So that's how this, this thought kind of came through. And working through the core committee, uh, I, I've spoken with building principal, I've spoken with a staff member. Um, this is a problem. And this is an opportunity to solve that problem. So that's what the underground storm drainage is. It takes all the water that's in the back and puts it into the city system. That total of the work, $50,300, bringing the total that we are offering to the board for approval of $645,854. Uh, and if there are other members of that core committee that would like to provide more information, by all means. I think we've spoken about something will eventually have to be done. This seems like the most effective and efficient use of dollars now, rather than having to kick it down the road and all of a sudden have it cost actually more to fix a problem we could fix now. We also discussed the potential that if we didn't fix it now, it could damage the building, which would be way more expensive in the future. It's much cheaper when they're on site to do it now and fix it as opposed to waiting, fixing it, and then fixing the building. Can the city's drainage handle the extra water? Yes. And so the amount we're looking at here is the 35 or which? Say that again, please. What is the amount we're looking at for this? The total amount that we can approve would be $645,854, which would complete the Westview project. But the drainage issue piece is what? That the 50,000 50, something. Is that part of the approved referendum money, that 50,000? Approved referendum. Well, this is all part of the project that was put together with the referendum, correct? Correct. So the $50,000 that you're proposing we use, where does that come from? Does that come from the already approved dollar amount that we took to referendum? Yes, it will come out of that $36 million pot. So hopefully if we stay above one point something above on the... Or under. So that's not adding $50,000 to... No. This is already approved money. I don't yeah, so I, I, I think I understand your question better now. When, when we have that referendum, and that's 36 million, that's it. There's no way we can go back and ask for 50,000 more. What we're doing is making a, potentially, making a judgment decision. Does this become a priority as we are digging up that driveway to solve this issue at the same time within that $36 million. I know what you're saying. Also, I think maybe 
Um, the referendum total is $36 million. It wasn't approved that Westview's an X dollar amount, middle school's X dollar. It's the overall project for all projects is 36 million. The way the core team looked at it is a much cheaper option to fix a problem. And overall, we're still trending. If you just look at what we have for real bids already on the activities complex, 1.1 million good. So 50,000 to solve a problem right now is okay. the way that we were looking at it. Got it. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Kurt, second by Colleen, to approve the referendum purchasing as presented. Any other questions or comments on that? If you would, please add the dollar amount, Josh. You bet. And it's six hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred fifty-four dollars. So the recommendation is to approve the referendum purchasing project of six hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred fifty-four dollars as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. On to board meeting schedule. Very similar to last year, as far as we normally we'll have two meetings per month the second and the fourth wednesdays but during november december with the holidays it's tough to get together march is due to spring break time and then in june and july we can let our hair down and only meet once a month so moved and we always have the option of adding a meeting if we need to at all times yeah yeah so I'll second that motion. Motion by Ben, second by Jen, to approve the meeting schedule for this summer and the 23-24 school year as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Activities complex security cameras. This is an item that has traveled through operations and it to preface what we're going to purchase here, these would be security cameras in the activity complex. These are not, to, to kind of reinforce one of Jen's earlier questions, these are not part of that $36 million referendum. Purpose being, technology of this nature has such a short lifespan. So you're paying 20 years on those bonds, the cameras five, seven years, so from the beginning, our partners had advised us of this. Try and leave those short-term items out. If you can budget for and afford, include them like this. So that's what this is. So move. Second. Motion by Matt. Second by Kurt to approve the activities complex security cameras proposal by TC Networks as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Do they do the tech support for them? Is that included? Say that again, please. Do they do the tech support for them? Yes. And Jim, are there other cameras? Like I think about the back side of the building, especially where the little, I'm looking at the diagram now, mm -hmm. um, kind of where the, I think it would be the loading area maybe for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, they have, we have school cameras that take care of some of that. So these are just for this. Correct. But there yeah, are other the, cameras. The north side of that high school building, there are several cameras. Yeah. Okay, because it looks like, oh, we're gonna look at that, but the, <laughs> there are all these little in, inlets that I wanna make sure that they're still looked at mm -hmm. just by a different set of cameras. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none will vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries on to athletic trainer contract. The athletic trainer contract up for renewal. Uh, the big change this year is improving our coverage. Currently, it's roughly half of our home events will have a trainer. By doubling the contract proposal to 20,500, Southwest Health has agreed that there will be a trainer at all of our home events. <coughs> athletic trainer. So moved. Motion by Ben, second by Colleen, to approve the full-time Southwest Health Center athletic trainer contract proposal as presented. Any questions or comments on that? 
second, none will vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. CESA 3. Uh, this is an annual event in our partnership with CESA 3. Uh, the contract is increasing by roughly $3,000 compared to last year. Jamie Nutter, who is the administrator of CESA 3, had a cover sheet in which he explained uh, justifying the $3,000 increase. We are not increasing our partnerships with the different things. We haven't added a service, so to speak, but this is what it's going to cost for CESA next year. So I'll move. Second. Motion by Kurt, second by Steve, to approve the 23-24 CESA 3 contract as presented. Any questions or comments on that? Hearing none will vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Summer Enrichment School co uh, Coordinator. This is, uh, hat, this is an idea that started uh, probably about a year or so ago, and uh, the big push is how much our summer school has grown in, in recent years. Uh, we're looking at 400 students that take advantage of that. Specifically, June, 12 days over three weeks of our summer school, and a lot of it's supposed to be in this building. The younger students will remain at Neil Wilkins, but in looking at this, uh, working with the program committee, this allows one of our staff members would like to maybe uh, would enjoy the challenge of coordinating and it is it's a rather extreme effort to put together a summer school with with all of the different offerings so they can get experience there but they can also get experience maybe as an administrator during summer school the flip side is it allows our building administrators to focus more on our remedial efforts with our students so there's a need there uh, I believe this is a good solution. The only, oh, I can't have questions yet, right? Oh, you have questions. Okay. In the qualifications, I, I see, obviously, a teaching license is required. Um, I was just curious if we really want to give the administrative staff time to work on the actual um, regular lift and load. I'm not sure why the administrative license preferred is in as a part of this. I think we had that debate early on, and that's why it used, the first time through the program committee helped. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, the first time through program committee was like, well, the first time through we had it to where it was administrative license required. Mm -hmm. Feedback from the program was exactly what you're saying, and so that's why it's preferred. So maybe with preferred, you have somebody who is, let's say, six, seven years into their teaching career before they start taking classes. They want to try and say, well, maybe I want to try this administrative. So the preferred kind of gives us that leeway. But they wouldn't have their license yet. They would nope. just have. So if you're preferring a, an administrative license, aren't you saying that? I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know that it's preferred is a word I would use then. I mean, we're trying to give them administrative experience. Mm -hmm. Um, as they're working on their license. So the word preferred just throws me off. But what would you prefer? Do you well, I, I would incur, <laughs> in, admin, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, and it's not even licensed, maybe administrative track programming or, you know, if they're interested in being an administrator, this is a great way for them to get that experience. I, mm -hmm. I just prefer. Putting preferred license, just we would never get somebody that is learning to be administrator. We would get somebody that has their administrative license. So by using the language preferred, preferred is it, nice to have. it's great if they have it, but it's not re therefore they don't need it. But if someone does have it, they get. Do they get preference then? Though, will they get more points on a reading a rubric? I mean, I'm just trying to figure that out. Yeah, I, it, I'm looking at it similar to what Ben is, okay. in that it's, it's preferred that you have an interest in this, preferred license would help. But if we have somebody and we, boy, that'd be great if we had three mm -hmm. that applied for it, yeah. uh, we would have to take those into consideration. Because, you know, it, it is part of the grow your own. I mean, it's everywhere. We, we're trying to grow our education 
<laughs> pipeline. I mean, we are short on educators everywhere. You know, so I'm just thinking about not limiting it by a, I mean, I, I, obviously they have to be a teacher in there. They have to have a teaching license to be able to do this, but just Would encouraged, you know, administrative desired. license encouraged. I mean, We're modifying that to desired give you a, a better feel there? It's possible for a teacher to have an administrative license but not use it. It is. I don't know how many people we have that are in that boat. Could we do this? This is for the approval of the position. Yep. Could we maybe continue some conversations about that word? The word smithing of just that one thing. But, but, a, but go forward with what we have on there tonight yeah. about the position. Does that sound acceptable? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm looking for a motion in a second, please. Colleen, I liked your comment about someone kind of in the track to get the administrative license. I guess that's something that also makes sense to me. So can I move that we approve the position? And that, that's exactly what it's for. It's the, the motion, the recommendation is to approve the new position of summer school coordinator. I would like to make the motion. Yep. Second. You made the motion. Sorry, Ben. I wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Motion by Ben, second by Jen, to approve the new position of summer school coordinator as presented. Any questions or comments on that? <coughs> None will vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Program support teacher. Uh, an example of trying to be creative and flexible to, to meet our student needs is this position. For the past two school years, we have advertised trying to secure a second full-time school psychologist. It hasn't been successful. Seeing that and knowing the steps that we took to try and secure that, we started thinking, well, what's a different route that we can start to meet our students' needs? So this idea and this job description was brought forward through the program committee. And so this person a school psychologist, what would separate the school psychologist would be, and Dr. Long, please help me if I, if I say it incorrectly, a school psychologist is then licensed to, to do a lot of the intelligence testing. A program support person could do some of the assessment otherwise. And it takes somebody who is interested, who has that, that skill set, uh, some special ed background would be very helpful in this position. It's a way to meet our students' needs just in a different format. So in program committee, please help with that explanation if you can. This is a shared position across the district, correct? Yes. Okay. So moved. Second. I guess from the program committee, you know, we've been frustrated not just the committee, but I guess we as a district, with not finding someone for two years at what it is we were looking at. So it was just a modification of that to try to get us over the hump. And, you know, we'll continue to, to look for a, a second school psycho psychologist or we're not? No, I, um, right now we are, I would say we've learned. It's been exhaustive what we've attempted to do. And I would like to take our, our talent and time and put it into this position. So I would not even post for that second school psych. It's off there. So financially, Here's a, a good question to ask. So the last past two years when we have built our budget, we have built the budget with this piece in place. We just didn't fill it. So the money is already where it used to have in that money designated. So we have a motion by Colleen, second by Betsy, to approve the creation of a program support position as presented. Any other questions or comments? I th this could be another potential of a grow your own. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Back. Yeah. Type yeah. So. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Technology purchases. Uh, letter N, technology purchases, an annual event about this time of year. Uh, this would be one of our last big draws out of our ESSER funds. They're about ready to be exhausted. 
And there, there's a couple of documents uh, talking about, we have the high school tech ed laptops, our office staff, they need new machines. Uh, this is the bid for the high school tech ed lab. Uh, this is our rotation and purchasing schedule. This is something that uh, a lot of credit to the tech department for creating this and keeping this updated. So as with any business, you want to avoid having outdated equipment. And by having the schedule that we can follow, we're in a good shape. Uh, and this is just another bid. So all told, uh, we're up for approval would be $96,480.95 using ESSER funds for technology purchases for the 23-24 school year. So, second. Motion by Colleen, second by Steve to approve the technology purchases as presented. Any questions or comments on that? What happens to the ones that are outdated? We use them as much as they're usable. Uh, some of them, I believe the term is called their Frankenstein, kept for parts. Um, and what we now deem as they're just outdated, maybe once or twice a year we have a recycling company come in and they pay us for them. Try and keep the shelves a little full, but not too full. Any other questions or comments on that? Hearing none, we will vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. One left. So move. Second. Motion by Kurt. Second by Colleen to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. We are adjourned at 7.51 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.